I actually feel like real fresh. Need a bit of a shave, but you know. <laughs> It's like what happens when you live in a cave for six weeks, eh? So, what's happening anyway? Um, not much. Just been busy working and training. I got in my two training sessions today, which I wanted to do, which is good. Yeah, sick. What have you been working on? Um, just helping family out. So, like, helping yep. out, clean up, clean the house, and all that. Sort have of you guys stuff. got like a big farm there? Or? Uh, it's not really a farm, it's just an acreage and we've got horses. Yeah, cool. What yeah. was your training? I did um, some ollie lifting, so I had snatching today. Yep. Um, and then I did just conditioning in the evening, um, running and double unders. Yeah, minutes. so be a bit of fun, eh? Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was hard, but... Yep. Yeah. You probably needed a bit of blowout, eh? Just mm. yeah, that's good. I think I'm about G two. So um sweet. Cool. So tonight's session is um part of process versus outcome. So a little bit of this is I'm gonna make this into a couple of different parts, but I sort of wanted to touch on a little bit more before we moved on to like the next section of this course. So I'll just bring up the screen share. Cool. And tonight we're just going to start with like awareness. So basically the most challenging part of mental awareness is, is essentially, I mean, sorry, of mental performance and mindset is actually being aware and having that understanding of when you're in different situations, you know, how is, how is your mindset right now? So a little, a really cool tool that you can use is the traffic light tool. So the way we want to look at this is basically you're driving down the road and then obviously like green light green light green light green light and it's like the best day in the world you just get like green lights all the way to the beach but then like sometimes it's like you're going along and then you're always hitting orange lights so like warning lights come on and then every now and then you're just constantly hitting red lights and so you have to stop and essentially like with mindset and performance it's about being aware of and perfection cool and so if we start with like the greens for us like when you're present you're focused like you're focused on your being productive it's almost like that flow state and it's quite hard to, to be here all the time but when you can achieve it like um i think we were talking about when you said uh at what what palooza and you're sort of mm -hmm. as soon as you got out there you were just you were just good as soon as you yeah. got on that floor, you were sort of just like present in the moment, focused on the process. And then, you know, the productivity happens because you already know what to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, with, with the red lights, like basically the first one, the first P is prayer. So essentially hoping. Um, uh, that could be like, you cannot hope that you're going to make the lift. You got to commit to making the outcome. So essentially what that means is like, if a teammate or someone asks you, is like, oh, do you think you'll get this lift? And you're like, oh, I hope so. And it's like, yeah. that's a really good indicator that you're in the red light because you're essentially praying that or hoping that you're going to make the lift rather than committing to the outcome. So that's a really good indicator you're in a red light. The other one's the perfectionist or being trying to be perfect. And that's like, <laughs> there's a little smile there so <laughs> mm -hmm. um but that's like i got a perfect technique i gotta i gotta make this perfect lift you know it's like the conditions aren't perfect but one of the key ways to get around that is to be present and not perfect um and then to make progress not not perfection so that's that's the other one and then primal is like it's the caveman approach where basically like you're not thinking at all you're just trying to run through doors um it's probably more of a, a male type thing because you know sometimes we just don't think and you just go hard and, and try to break down doors um but it's like when people say like oh go out there and give 110 percent when really it should be like try give yourself try give 95 percent because then you're still present, you know, you're not redlining, you're not over the top, you still got a little bit left in the tank to, to just for a bit of room to move. And that can be a really powerful place to be. Um, and like, 
really trying hard, like it doesn't really work. And when I was doing CrossFit, like I used to watch how like Cara Webb used to train and she'd literally like, it looks like she's not even trying. Like she'd just be looking straight dead ahead and she just cruising along and like you know she's working bloody hard but she's not trying hard so she's sort of she's in that flow state she's feeling it and she's just being present with the pro uh with the process um and it's more about just being fluid rather than like really trying to just smash it and give it everything you got and just let it flow let it flow and and just be present um so that's a little bit for a start, but what we're going to do tonight is we're actually going to work out um, how to how to bring awareness to the different traffic lights so that you know where you're at. Um, is there any of these you sort of relate to in terms of the three P's of the green and then the three P's of the red light? Um, so the green was green present present focused on the process and, and just being productive yeah so i guess i like i always try to be present when i'm when i'm training or when i'm practicing something try and keep my in my attention on my focus on what i'm doing yeah. um the red lights definitely um i'm a per perfectionist so i have worked on um letting go a little bit of some things in order to um, go harder or, or achieve something different with my training. Um, yeah. And also the prayer. I, I don't do that now, like for the example of hoping you're going to make the lift, but yep. definitely yep. something I've experienced, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like when you've been doing them sort of how, how did they, how did they turn out or how did they make you feel? Um, like, was it more hit and miss or was it like you always hit or did you always miss? For the red light? Yeah, for the red light, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it, it could be either, right? Like yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of what we're talking about is like, you really want to be in control of, of your yeah. process. And then when you're in control, well, to be in control, you've got to have awareness and it's like, when you're praying or trying to be perfect or just that primal instinct, you're sort of letting other things control you and it's, it's external things that are controlling you. And I was watching a really good video on this with um, a guy named George St. Pierre. I'm not too sure if you know him, but he's probably one of the greatest sort of UFC fighters of all time. And um, he was sort of talking about like when you got your green lights, it's like what, what you can a hundred percent control. So that's, that's essentially everything that is, in your control so that's your preparation it's um your nutrition it's basically every single those little little things that like are really mundane but when you master them and do them that's when you're in the green but it's when you're in complete control of yourself and that's probably the best way to look at green light and then when you're in the yellow lights and this is for like situational environments so let's say you're competing there are some things that you can influence um but also notice when you're losing control of yourself so for example in a, in a competition it could be that you know the music's really really loud and it's like right beside your lane or something like that and it's like it's throwing you out but you can control that to an extent and and it's how you react to those sort of things um, and then with our red lights it's what you can't control so if you focus on what you can't control, that's when you've lost control of yourself because these things that are external factors that are out of your control, that's when you start to spiral out of control and, and really to hit those red lights. So what we're gonna do is start to work out each part of each light. So what we wanna do is if you write down um, your green light, your yellow light and your red light, and for a start, what we wanna do is work out Write out your signal lights in the areas of, for your green light, what's your body language like? What's your focus like? What's your self-talk self like? Um, what sort of physical feelings are you feeling like? Are you feeling like really powerful, really confident? Does, like, does your body just feel on? Um, and what are the situations in your sport that you know, really give you that sense of confidence um, and feeling that you're in complete control for your green lights? Thank you. 
Give you a couple minutes. I'll just talk about it. Yeah, yeah, sweet. So, um, yeah, what's your body language like? Um, body language, like pretty relaxed. Yeah. Um, my focus or like my gaze is very direct. Yeah. Like I'll be um, staring at something or looking at something. Yeah. A bit, a bit blankly and directly. Yeah. Um, poker face kind of thing going on. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of in terms of body language. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I think, um, what about um, self talk? Mm, I don't know. How do you like, so when you say just with lifting, like when you know you're going to hit a lift, what are you sort of saying? What's your mind saying to yourself? Like, what are you saying when you approach that bar? Are you like, are you going over the process that you need to work on? Or is it, are you pumping yourself up or? Um, so I'm pretty much just focusing on what I need to do. Yep. Um, the, I guess the self-talk is just how I'm going to do it and it's going to be successful. And then like, um, do you have any cues? Like doesn't have to be specific to, do you use cues or? I use mantras a lot in my training. Yep. Um, do you have an example? Yeah, probably more for the um, mentally tough workouts where it's like cardio heavy or metcons or something like that. Um, yep. Do I, one example, do I want to rest or do I need to rest? Um, and then another one, which I would use probably in any sort of training is, am I doing my best? Yeah, that's cool. It's a good question to ask, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, been a massive thing for me. It's helped me a lot. Yeah. And um, like what sort of feedback do you get from that question? Um, well, if I'm not, then I will work harder or I will do more. Um, if I feel like I truly am doing enough, then I can be satisfied with that in like internally. Yeah, like, that's cool. I'm, like I'm trying hard. I'm pretty sure I'm doing my best and I don't have anything more. And I'll just yep. keep going at that pace or keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, awesome. One I used was, um, it was like, I'm comfortable here. So it's yeah, like, so. essentially like, anytime you're in an uncomfortable situation just that's what i used to repeat to myself was like i'm comfortable here and it's like i saw when you're trying to push that limit i'm like i want to be here and it's like keep reminding yourself because for me it's like when you're when you're on that sort of red line sort of thing you've always got more because really like you're only really 80 90 percent and it's like yeah. it's like i'm comfortable here and i want to be here and then yeah. instead of like, for me, that would sort of make me switch from like being uncomfortable and sort of wanting to slow down to being like comfortable and ready to give a little bit more. And it always yeah. just made it really calm and peaceful. Um, mm. Yeah, cool. What sort of physical feelings do you get when you're like really on, really confident and the green lights? Mm. Can you give me an example? Like sometimes like when I walk up to a bar, like I just feel like say I'm squatting, I'm just like, it feels like it's fucking stomped through the floor. Like yeah. my legs just feel like, like I could jump really, really high. Like you just got heaps of energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess maybe like in that sense of walking up to a lift, it's like a strong feeling and, um, yeah, like strong legs, strong arms. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's real cool. Like a lot of this stuff too, like some people, some people feel, some people see themselves and other people like 
can just like they cue themselves so they hear themselves um yeah. what sort of situations in your sport give you that green light feeling or that confidence or maybe an example of of something that has happened in your sport where you feel like you're in complete control mm. maybe it could be like looking at a timer knowing that you're on with your reps or yeah well that's definitely um one way or one scenario like if i'm doing a particular workout where i've set a marker for myself and i'm trying to hit um a certain number of reps certain time and i can like kind of watch that and and know that i am in the right right spot um yeah i think yeah cool it's something to like really really think about and i guess it's like you get a bit more time to write these down like it'd be cool like yeah, yeah as and when next time you're training and stuff just really take down like next time you have a really really good session like when you're like every single thing you want to do just happens and you're like fuck that was the best session of my life like just like take five minutes to reflect and then write down like you know these five points and then mm -hmm. go through that cool what about yellow lights so this is where you're like you got a feeling or like you're starting to know that maybe like you're a little bit off and your performance is starting to be a little bit off so what are the, some of the things in terms of your body language um focus self-talk feelings and pretty much the same five things um so my focus probably starts to shift i'll start worrying about what other people are doing yeah um or maybe maybe something that's happening around me yeah um self-talk i don't know if this is yellow or red but there's that like doubt that starts to creep into my mind yeah or like maybe not even the doubt but the um the realization that i could fail or like yeah that um is it a fear or is it is it a feeling or is it like maybe um a projection um i wouldn't say it's a it's a feeling at this point um definitely like if i were maybe in the red if that's still re relevant um yeah then it's a um uh, i guess it's a a feeling a fear a disbelief probably what I'm talking about here where the doubt creeps in and um it's more just a like kind of just like a possible scenario in my head like I realize that there's two outcomes I'm either going to be successful um in a lift for example or I'm going to fail whereas yeah. if I'm green I just, I just know I'm going to be successful yeah yeah so it's like yeah like there's two different focuses almost eh? whereas yeah like, you're giving yourself an option and an out rather yeah. than just, just committing to that outcome. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. Um, awesome. And then in terms of your physical feelings, is there anything that feels different? Do you feel a bit more sluggish or sometimes things feel heavy? Um, sometimes I think things feel hard. Yeah. Or they might feel harder than what they. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um. That's sort of when I go back to that self talk of like I'm comfortable here. Yeah. Like my little reminder is like, and I think it's for you. It's like that same question, isn't it? Like, um, am I working hard? You know, mm. Going back to your questions and your self talk. Yeah. Um yeah that's cool cool awesome and red lights how's your body language looking um <clears throat> can we just go back to what red was again uh so red's like yeah. when you're completely I, out of control and you're like yeah. basically crack the shits yeah um body language I don't know. Um, pr 
probably like really small, like um yep. like small posture type. Yeah. yeah, not carrying myself confidently, not yeah. holding myself high. Yeah. Well, how do you like how do you approach either the workout, the bar, your competition? In terms of like, how do you walk up? <clears throat> yeah, I can't really relate this to a competition. I can't relate that feeling to a competition, but yep. I guess in training, um, um, it's just kind of like a feeling of, okay, we're already a feeling, a feeling of like hopelessness and like, yep. um, frustration. Yeah, that pretty, yeah, that's cool. Um, Focus is just on negative. Yeah, negative. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. super common, eh? and it's like once you sort of get there, it's quite hard to like you're already there, and that's when you've lost control. And the whole process of this, the whole purpose is, of this is is being aware of each level. So obviously, like ideally, we want to be in the green light all the time. And in a perfect world, you know, we'd all be bloody just peaking and performing at our very best all the time. But obviously, it's, it's not like that. And then what you want to do is start to be like, maybe it's like you're just starting to notice like you, that you're starting to get that shifting focus um, or you're starting to think about what other people are doing, that doubt creeps in. And the whole idea is to notice that before it starts to become the red light. So you sort of want to, yeah, you want to be like, okay, shit, I'm starting to go into my yellow now. Um, let's, let's work on some strategies and tools so that we can basically bring it back to the green. Um, so that like, if you ever get to like, you know, your, your peak and your best ever performance, you really want to make sure that you've got something to bring you back to the green, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually going to go into that, which is pretty cool. So what we want to do is um, just a quick one on this and maybe do like a quick description of like maybe one or two sentences describing yourself when you are in complete control of yourself. And that's hard to do, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, like, how do you describe, what do you mean? Like what's, what do you got? So if, if I, if you were looking through my eyes and I was watching you, like at training or competing or whatever you want, like how would I describe you? Um, I am just doing my own thing, not yeah. really engaging. Yeah. Um, with things that aren't um, in line with what I'm trying to do. Or like, yeah, that's a nice way of nice way of putting. I don't talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, what else? I'm probably working hard. Like, yeah. When I'm in control of what I'm doing, I'm putting the work in. Yeah. Working hard, yeah. but still in control. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Putting in the work. Yeah, so anything else? Does it look does it look effortless or does it look like hard or does it look graceful or how does it look? Um probably like it looks like I know what I'm doing. So effortless in a sense, I guess. Yeah. And probably like, I guess, confident, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah awesome. Cool. What about when you're yellow? Um, What would someone notice if they were like, if they knew you really well and they were sort of like watching you train and then they're like, shit, she's, she's starting to lose it a little bit here. What would they notice? 
um, if I get frustrated at all. Yeah. So like starting to get frustrated? Yeah, or like display any frustrations. Yeah. Probably yeah. more so because I can get frustrated and control it. But as soon as I start to yeah. um, do anything physically, that's when I'm starting to lose control. Like if I drop my rope on the ground or throw my rope, I don't throw my rope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like you're not quite as, um, like, I don't know if the word surgical, but it's like you start to, you're not as precise. Or not as calm, maybe. Not as calm, yeah. Um, more worried about what other people might be doing. Um, more self conscious. When I start getting self conscious, I'm definitely heading towards that red. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. My spelling's atrocious, eh? Hey? Cool. Yep. Sweet. Anything else? Would there be anything that, like, you notice? I like, so in terms of like, when you're in the green, you look here for less than confident um, and you're putting in the work, what's different when you start to go in the yellow? I slow down. Yeah. So it starts looking hard? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Look for easy way out. Easy yeah. What about red? I'm probably on my way home. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked it. Um, Go on home. <laughs> yeah. No snow. Yeah. Do you find sometimes like when you use that emotion, to, can you use it to your advantage or is it more of a... It depends what it is. Okay. Um, if it's upset and sadness it usually works against me yeah if it's a little bit of of anger or frustration sometimes i can use it but it's probably more likely that the like upset um turned into an overwhelm and then it's yeah. a, i need to go and do something else yeah. it's quite good like and during that five seconds, it's probably a lot longer, but it actually like, it seems like a really long time, but it's only like two or three fourths. And you're like, okay, am I, am I doing what I'm doing right now? Is this actually useful or is it, or is it like distracting and, and making things not useful? And it's, I'm getting better at that. Um, mm. Normally I'm, I'm quite reactive rather than responding. So it's like, just keep reminding myself, like, take a breath and respond rather than just explode and react. Um, and that's sort of one of my cues anyway. So yeah, cool. All right. So part three is like identify what, what percentage of the time you go into um, your red and yellow lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What in your light <laughs> by the looks of that smile. <laughs> okay. Um, what percentage? Like, let's say, like, you've got 10 workouts. How many of them would you start to drift into red and yellow? Um, probably, like, drift into yellow quite a bit. Yeah. Um, or maybe even, like, a very small portion of every session. Yeah. So almost, like... 90% of the time? Um, I wouldn't say 90% because it might be like 10% um, of a of a session kind of thing. So maybe 50%, 50 to, I don't know, 50 to 60%. Yeah. 50 to 60% overall. Cool. What about red? Red is pretty rare and it definitely depends on where I'm at in like my phase of training. Yeah. Or, or how, or how my training is. Progressing. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Hey, so uh, when it? when you say phase of training, what sort of phases do you notice knock you around a bit more? Is it more like the peak of your program or is it like, you know, the week before deload or is it just like heavy volume, heavy lifting? Um, so heavy is not, not too bad. Um, the thing's not bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, the really high intensity, uh, the conditioning stuff gets me more. Yeah. Um, but in terms of going into that red, red zone and kind of losing control of, of my emotions and my, um, attitude and my actions it's more around skills work so things okay. like gymnastics and um like working on skills on the rings for example yeah is that because you don't get it straight away and like that perfectionism um it's because i've been working on it for a very very long time and there's that disbelief that i can do it and the upset in that not progress yeah. how i think i should be yeah cool yeah that's cool what do you where do you think that stems from like most of it um which bit specifically like, like just that disbelief and frustration and learning new skills um do you normally find like skills come quite easy to you or? Well, well not really. Yeah. I don't know. That's a hard question. Um, like it's never come super easy for me. I'm, I'm a fast learner, so I learn things really quickly, but yep. gymnastic stuff because, um, maybe because I don't have a background, I don't know. Like I've, I've just had to invest a lot of time in it and I, um, I guess I lose confidence sometimes. Yeah. What about, um, so what gymnastic skills have you ticked off that you're really proud of? Um, lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, I've ticked most of them off. But yep. now I can't take them off anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what yeah. happened. Did you um you filled out the confidence resume, eh? Yeah. You should you should do this like fill that out with your gymnastics stuff as well. Um because okay. it's just it's just a snowball effect, isn't it? Like if you can't you gotta sort of give yourself a bit of credit for it sometimes. And then, cause the thing that you're getting frustrated with and the disbelief is that you can't take off these gymnastic skills, but yeah. then you just literally just said, Oh, I can't take off any more skills. <laughs> so it's like, um, so it's, it's a little bit about maybe just building that confidence and that belief in yourself that you can do it cause you have done it. And then maybe just detaching yourself from the outcome. And just really going back to that process and and when you start to get that frustration boiling up um it's actually going to come into the next part what we're going to talk about but just sort of noticing and identifying those traits because most of the other stuff you you're doing pretty well with and it's like yeah oh it's just like maybe even before every gymnastics session just go and do like look at your confidence resume so that you build up mm. that in yourself um, yeah that's cool Awesome. So what we're going to look at now um, is basically a couple of techniques on how to get yourself back into the green. Um, so the first one is the three step release routine. Cool. So basically what you got to do for a start, there's three stages to this. It's number one, you got to recognize. So if you don't understand what your green lights are, your red lights and your, your yellow lights are, then it's very, very hard to, to come back because you're, you're essentially just, letting yourself go without having any control over yourself. So the first thing you got to do is recognize and you got to recognize your body language, your focus, your self talk, your situations and your physical feelings. And this is a bit of a skill like, and it's, it's like each time you start to feel these come up, just take little notes and, and sort of give yourself like what I do for myself is, um, 
And it's something that like is quite common in like two B and one Bs. And I'm pretty sure like just by what you've been saying, you probably want bears. Like we got higher acetylcholine, um, which is essentially like your memory neurotransmitter. So what you can do is like you can access information really, really quickly. And that's why we're like quite good at learning new skills. But basically what we do is like every time you feel these emotions and, and um, like you focus yourself talking and, and you start to recognize what's going on, take almost like a little snapshot of it and then just store it away. And then like every other time you're in the same situation, just sort of like try go and access that information. And it, the more you sort of do it, the more it comes back and you just got to take yourself that time and give yourself that breath to, to recognize what's actually going on. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then the next part is like the release. So basically letting the last outcome go. So what you got to do is like have a physical action. And so like, it could be like, okay, you missed the muscle up. Well, it could be like, you just clap your hands or like you go to the chalk bucket, you chalk up again, pretty much just anything that's a physical action where it's like, you're just letting it go. So you're letting that last action go. Then you're going to take your releasing breath. So it's essentially like you do your action. So it's like, cool. And then you basically give yourself a verbal trigger to move back on, to move on again. So it's like you clap, let's go cool or something like that so it's three step um basically a three-step process to to release and let that last outcome go because there's a thing called like mental bricks and if you hold on to them they just start to weigh you down weigh you down weigh you down so you really got to like release those bricks um because it could be like yeah okay you missed a muscle up you missed a snatch whatever and it's like you can either let that sort of sit with you or you can release and let it go um, by using that three-step process and then once you've done that what you got to do is ask yourself like are you back in the green or do you need to do it again do you need to keep releasing that outcome create that awareness so going back to the awareness releasing again and then asking yourself are you back in the green cool so what we're going to do now is i want you to write out like your three-step release um, routine and then mm -hmm. we're just going to like say it out loud five times Okay. Cool. Um, I don't have an action. Um, I think like if like you watch Tia, she sort of like stomps her feet and screams. She's like, nah, and then. But that's her like little thing is she like she'll stop yeah and, yeah so like just sort of i guess like either you have one yourself or maybe something that someone else does yeah that you can emulate yeah sometimes i like kick my toe that's like a thing yeah you kind of like kick your toe to the ground oh yeah like stomp your toe sort of thing mm, kind of okay yeah i think i know what you mean yeah cool um and then the breath cool and then what's your verbal trigger to move on um, i'm not sure if there's something i use already um what about um something like next rep or like let it go or just like come on or something like that yeah let um let's say let's go yeah. and i will revisit that i'll test it out yeah so you gotta do five reps cool so like do your action breath and then let's go i'm gonna do it now yeah <laughs> Yeah, so you got to do five <laughs> reps. <laughs> yeah. okay. And it's got to have emotion, like, it's got to be real. Oh, I don't like reenacting. Okay, cool. Um, let's go. Let's go. 
Yeah, cool. Sweet. It's it's really good. Like it's good to practice this stuff because then when you are, it's it's just like it's the same as mastering your snatch technique. Like the more you do it, the more you repeat it, and then when you start to recognize that you're in these situations, you can just do that. Like you've got that tool there. It's it's essentially another tool in your belt to let it yeah. come and bring you back to the green rather than be like yeah. fuck. I'm just gonna spiral out of control and throw down my skipping rope and go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's definitely yeah. um like something I feel like I maybe have done or like when you're in that moment you try and like say stuff to yourself, but you don't yeah. really believe it, I guess. So yeah. maybe practicing will kind of yeah. Yeah, if- definitely. And like just doing it in your own time, mate. Eh? Like when you're training yeah. on your own, um, like you can tell like people like Tia and pretty much anyone that's pretty high level, they all have these routines, whether they've practiced it or they just do it naturally. Yeah. Um, like it's pretty clear, like they do exactly the same stuff every time. And it's just, it becomes almost like their trademark. So um, mm. like yeah. Matt Fraser, he like, he'll just take his top off and then you know it's on. Like that's like his next gear. And it's like, yeah. just those little things there. Eh? And it's yeah. like, for them, it's, it's a mental trigger. And it, it just yeah. allows them to move on and, and go again. Cool. And then the next part to this is like a two-step refocus. And I think you're actually, um, you said this at the start, where it's like, so a two-step refocus routine is what you do before like every play, every lift attempt as part of your pre-play routine. And you want to be sure you do this after each time that you follow the three-step release. So essentially what you've got to do is yeah. recognize, release, um, and then refocus. And so I remember for you, you said like, you just focus in on that one point and then, mm-hmm. and then you know you're good. And that's, that's what you got to do. And once you've done your three-step release, it's like, okay, I'm back in the green now. Just refocus and get yourself back in that focal point. And um, it could even be something like finding a green thing versus a red thing in the room and then just looking at that green thing. Or you could have like, I've seen the example of like a green finger paint, like a green fingernail or something like that and it's like instead of like looking at something red just look at something green or just give yourself a focus point and then just get into it again so what you got to do is like you're do something. So the, the four, and you want to feel how that lift feels mm-hmm. and it's so like i actually i used to do this a lot when i'd be doing like a muscle up or something like that like i don't think i sort of spoke the action but what i would do is like, you can almost mm-hmm. say before you that's and now basically the spinal part um and out of those sort of three things like you weren't really you didn't really use feeling a lot um Mm, yeah image definitely yeah yeah like pretty much see it every time yeah yeah it's cool cool all right so what we'll do then like i'll just get you to tell me um just go through those steps so write out Mm -hmm. Your four, your image and your feeling. Um, even mm-hmm. if it's a challenge, just try to bring up those three things and sort of attach it to anything you want to. Um, mm-hmm. Like an exercise? Yeah, like an exercise. It could be mm-hmm. gymnastics. What's the number one thing you're struggling with in gymnastics right now? Bring muscle ups. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Sweet. All right, so what's a... What, um, thought can you use so what 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 self-talk can you say to yourself about the muscle up like it could be like something like transition fast it could be like wait till you feel weightlessness or something like that mm-hmm. tight body um tight legs big hips yeah all right keep keep my legs straight tight legs big hips legs straight so basically a whip, eh? Cool. Yeah. Um, image. What are you seeing? Um, probably seeing my hips sort of go up towards the rings, and then the transition. And I'm, yeah. And when do you see yourself transitioning? When? Yeah. Um, it's not super specific. Like it's 
um, just after my hips are. Recognize this and then refocus. Did like go over the sheet and just sort of have a real good and just.